Welcome back again. Now let's talk more about that magnificent event that took place last Saturday where the whole world were have, um, directing their eyes towards downtown Cairo for the royal parade of the 22 royal mummies, 18 kings and 4 queens who have been resting for centuries at uh, Cairo's museum in Tahrir Square and moved all the way to Al Fustat um, area um, at the new Egyptian or renovated Egyptian uh, civilization museum. And of course that was a dazzling event that uh, millions of people around the world have witnessed so many um, feedbacks and comments on it from not just the historical reviving of um, what took place in terms of the history and the different dynasties that these kings and queens belong to the beautiful outfits even the designs the organization the mass organization that was done perfectly the opera of course and the merging between the opera and the uh, old uh, pharaonic um, music style everything was just so magnificent that it's very important to talk about this and there's so many messages that were actually delivered to the world not just that egypt is safe and secure but egypt is and will always be a country of civilization and great history um, but also the uniqueness of organization and um, blending between uh, different dynasties and the, the, the promotion, the priceless promotion of Egypt on a tourism level around the world is something that we will be definitely talking about the whole world. When I say we, I'm talking about the whole world. We'll be talking about this magnificent um, ceremony that was broadcast live on state television, of course, 400 uh, different uh, media outlets and international magazines and newspapers took part. So. This is going to be something we would want to also hear um, our guest's caller over the phone speak about. We are very delighted to have joining us over the phone Her Excellency Ambassador Mushira Khattab, prominent diplomat, former Minister of Family and Population. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, this event in particular, I know that it has been taken a couple of years to prepare everything, the details, the vehicles that were very well equipped and they had special specification to the whole journey. And that's possibly considered one of the most outstanding events in 21st century. Tell us about your feelings, your feelings as an Egyptian citizen and as a person in the dipl diplomatic field for a very long time about this event. Well, uh, it's actually not easy to find words that adequately express our sense of national pride and elation for the success of the event that captured the admiration of the entire world. The success goes beyond the scenery of the mummy's parade or the choice of colors and designs to uh, emulate the different uh, dynasties. It also goes beyond the immaculate uh, craftsmanship that crafted the royal carriages, uh, dresses of presenters and dancers. It was actually a testament to our greatness of soft power and success as Egyptians, mm -hmm. as people who appreciate art and history. Mm -hmm. It is the vision, the innovation, the thinking and the research that were invented, in, 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 uh, in, uh, invested into preparing for such an event, like you said, it took a long time. It is also the cooperation, coordination, and delegation of power that went behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. It was a very rare moment for the world uh, to come to feel our instinct as Egyptians. Mm -hmm. uh, historically known for our elegance, beauty, and innovation. Mm -hmm. To me, it was a success because artists were free to express themselves and their talents. Mm -hmm. It was a success because of the delegation of power. Huge team was working behind the scenes, mm -hmm. allowing space for innovation and freedom of expression, which encouraged Egyptians to discover themselves, to excel and inspire the world. Mm -hmm. Let me say that uh, art and women were the face of the event. And that's exactly um, what I was going to ask you about, if you'd allow me to interrupt you here, but um, maybe I was postponing this question a little further. But yes, I mean, women were reflected. Uh
very brightly and greatly to this extent. We had so many women participating, even if we're going to talk about the, um, the orchestra at the opera, uh, from the opera who were actually um, taking part of the musical uh, ceremony there. They were women, they were playing even instruments that are not very pro-women kind of um, instruments. We've seen women take part in the streets with the beautiful um, pharaonic um, um, designs and, and outfits. So what again message would that reflect to the world about Egypt when it comes to supporting women and how women played a very important role back then, uh, mind you, at uh, different dynasties in the, Egypt, in the pharaohs uh, period? This was the Egypt we know, the pure Egypt, the original authentic Egypt because Egypt suffered from a certain uh, distortion for some time. But this was a moment where Egyptians showed the world, they demonstrated how Egyptians are. If you look at the history of Egypt, women excel, or, or when women excel, it was the time when Egypt prospered. Mm. And during the times of pharaohs, we saw Cleopatra, Nefertiti, Hatshepsut, who led the army. And you mentioned the orchestra. Actually, mm. the choice of music by Cairo uh, Symphony Orchestra was superb. Mm -hmm. And the selection of musicians. And they blend uh, between it was a different stroke types. Of genius. Yes. It, it was a stroke of genius. The outfit, it, it was superb. Egyptian mm. women shown as presenters, singers, dancers, musicians, really. And, and, and we've seen only few of women who were involved in this because many more women were behind the scenes. Mm. The unknown soldiers mm. who designed outfits they and were chose beautiful. color themes. Really, uh, the... the a, a, a very important aspect that we as Egyptians must invest in is that the success of this event will give a huge boost to up-and-coming local designers and artists. Definitely, it definitely. It will revive and strengthen Egyptian art, and it will boost our pride as ancestors of the great ancient Egyptians. Infinite, uh, absolutely President, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi revived our long-lived and loved Tahya Mask slogan. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And this event is the perfect reflection of how proud we are as Egyptians. Mm -hmm. my, if, my... I, yeah, if I can add, uh, yes, you can. Minute details were looked after. Mm -hmm. uh, the sight of actor Khalid al Nadawi wearing the Palestinian scarf, visiting the Jewish temple, and behind him we saw the words, Don't steal, don't yearn for the belongings of your neighbor. What? Very well. But uh, maybe message. I just, if you would allow me to just like. Um, give this um, little comment because a lot of people I heard them say that the Palestinian um, hatta as they call it is black and white I think this is a Bedouin um, um, one again um, reflecting on the identity and the um, uh, the you know the sort of the different uh, uh, tribes and the different cultures here in Egypt part of the pharaonic and the Bedouin tribes I believe uh, this, 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 this really was very, uh, very, uh, how can I say, it was a genius mm -hmm. uh, shot. A very brief moment, but it gave a very strong message and it, sh it shows us that a lot of thinking mm. has gone into Absolutely. preparing for this event. And, and we must, we, we have seen, I followed some uh, interviews that took place with the musicians and with the, uh, the uh, uh, lead of the orchestra. Mm -hmm. We saw how President Abdel Fattah Sisi was closely following the process, mm -hmm. how the Prime Minister, Dr. Mustafa Matbouli, coordinated the input by the cabinet, the different line ministries, mm. and of course, our brilliant 
Minister of Antiquities, Khaled Al-Amani. Yes. And his dedicated team. I mean, when we saw how he was... Uh, uh, presenting the different pieces to President That Bishy was marvelous. I wish we had more time I mean, to talk about that. Unfortunately, like we don't. Fish between the different episodes and, mm -hmm. and really, it, it, it was super. This event mm -hmm. will take a long time from us to analyze and learn many lessons and uh, motivate us into yes. uh, excelling. Absolutely. And, I wish we had more time, Your Excellency, to speak about the director keeps saying we're out of time, but I really thought we had more time to discuss that because, as you said, the Minister of Antiquities did a great job about the museum itself that the President inaugurated, the Egyptian um, Museum for Civilization, where he knew every single piece where it was put in the blend of the different dynasties and eras, of course, that was something we'll definitely talk about again. Ambassador Mushira Khattab, prominent diplomat, former minister of family and population, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, of course, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. I'll leave you in with this report. Again, recapping about the most important parts and stops that took place during the parades on Saturday. I'm Yasmin Bakir signing off. Thank you for watching.